Hello, class, and welcome to uh, Module 7, Assignment 7, on um, installing DNS through PowerShell in a Windows server. So this is a pretty fast um, little lab if you do it. Um, again, I'm going to be doing it in VMware. The lab in NetLab may not match up to this because I've been revamping things in NetLab. So again, always follow the labs that are in the module that we're doing during the week okay don't trust what's in net labs you can still do this in NetLab. you can still go to lab seven and do this just use the lab manual that's in uh canvas so um we'll go ahead and share my screen here all right and i've logged into the uh, primary domain controller all right, or what's going to be our primary domain controller, the 2019 static server. And I'm going to uh, uh, go ahead and just hit the window and type in PowerShell or start typing PowerShell. And it doesn't, shouldn't really matter if you use the ISC or the regular one or whatever. It's all going to be the same. It's all PowerShell. All right. And then I'm going to be starting here on page six of the lab manual. The first five pages were mostly informational, but when you get to, to the title, the heading, it says installing the DNS server role in Windows Server 2019. That's where I'm starting. So I've already, uh, there's a reference uh, link there too that will take you from to the material online where I got all this. Um, I'm on the server that is dot 200. I'm going to go ahead and start PowerShell from the taskbar, which I already have. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and install the Windows feature DNS equals uh, dash include management tools. I'll try to copy that. And it's not going to let me paste it in there. Okay. One second, if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording and I'm going to try to troubleshoot this really, really, really fast. Okay, so what I had to do is I had not installed um, VMware tools on this latest and greatest um, server that I did. To do that, in case you need to do it, if you have not done it or you forgot how to do it, uh, in VMware Workstation, I just go up here to VM, uh, and now you should have install VMware tools, or you can reinstall VMware tools, click on that. It's going to open up your DVD on the virtual machine, um, and you just run the typical installation, and it should be good. So now, I'm hoping I can, yeah, there, I can paste stuff in there, so... VMware tools is a, you know, a godsend in that regards. So I'm basically just cutting and pasting this out of the lab manual. And this will go pretty quick. So after the roles installed, which will be done here in a minute. All right. So you should get that success. That's great. Our next command is get Windows featured DNS. All right, and that shows you that the DNS server is installed. That's wonderful. All right, now we're gonna configure the internal server network interface to use itself for DNS name resolution. That'll be this command. Copy. Again, on, on this is number four in the lab manual. So it's the set DNS client server address command. Do that. And as long as we get any, any red text or anything like that, we're, we're just flowing along just great. Now let's just go ahead and do a quick IP config all and see where we're at. So you can see that our DNS server is set to ourselves both local uh, loopback address and local IP address, which is fine. Uh, although that's gonna break stuff, <laughs> it really is. Unless we 
set up DNS forwarding to a public DNS server, which we will do so here in a moment. Okay, so when we do a NS lookup google.com, it's going to fail. All right, well, it's going to come back to, oh, it's not going to fail. It's going to actually come back to the address of its IPv6 address. Well, that's good. Like I said, it's doing a reference to my host machine since it's VMware. Uh, you won't be able to do that in NetLab because the NetLab VMs are not connected to the internet. This is why I really encourage you to uh, use VMware if at all possible. Um, I got a got everybody a license for that this 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 term. All right, so the next uh, one second here. And to, let's see, the next step here is going to do a little bit of firewall work with Windows Firewall um, to allow all incoming network traffic from uh, the other hosts. So this is going to be the NetSH Advanced Firewall command. Again, I'm on page seven of the lab manual. If I can get it to copy. There we go. And we'll put that in here. All right. Okay. And after you do those commands, you should get an okay at the end. Um, and then we can exit out of PowerShell because we're done with PowerShell. And we will go into the DNS uh, configuration. So to configure, DNS in the lab, what we're going to do is uh, click on start, type DNS, and I'll bring up the DNS app. There we go. And there's a couple of steps we have to do here. Again, now I'm on page eight of nine, step number three. In the left navigator pane of the DNS manager window, expand your server name, which it already is. So there it is right there. So that'll give us a forward reverse, trust points, et cetera. Um, and right-click on forward lookup zones. So right-click on that and then click on new zone. And this will open up the new zone wizard. Uh, we'll accept the default of a primary zone and click next. So primary zone. And then the zone name, type fakezone.com. and then click next. Uh, ex then accept the defaults for the rest of the wizard throughout, which just, it should be default and click finish. There, all right, cool. Um, now on step number eight, we're gonna expand forward lookup zones, click on the fake zone.com and on the right, notice that there's a default SOA and NS DNS records, it's these here. All right, expand the forward, uh, uh, a reverse lookup zone should be created for the subnet on the left. So we're gonna right click on reverse lookup zone here, right click and do new zone. All right, and then we're gonna click next. It's going to be a primary zone as well. It's going to be for IPv4. And then the network ID is going to be 192.168.10. We don't worry about the last octet. Because it'll be for everything. And then you can uh, keep the ID there, the, the zone name the same. It's not that big of a deal. And then we're gonna click next. 
do everything the rest of the way to fault. And we're gonna click finish here at the end. All right, so now under fakezone.com, we're gonna right click and we're gonna do a new host or a AAA record. And under the name here, uh, we're going to specify dub 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 for the name and 192.168.10.200 for the IP address. This is basically how you make an A record for DNS. An A record is going to point to a specific uh, host or IP. We're going to create an associated pointer record. All right, to point to it. And we get the thing that says, oh, yay, you successfully created it, yay. So we're gonna click done, click done, there we go. And now you'll see that that A record is there and create it. So let's go back and start PowerShell. And under PowerShell, we're going to type NSLOOKUP followed by www.fakezone.com. You'll notice, hey, there we are. There's our server. There's our name. There's our IP address. All right. And last but not least, we're going to type get DNS server. I'll, I'll uh, get dash DNS server. And come on, there we go. And PowerShell will return all the records that the DNS server has. Okay, zone names, etc., which is really, really, really cool. So one thing that you do want to check um, that I want to check before you do this is I want to do a ping. Make sure I can still hit Google because. I want to make sure that DNS is properly still doing forward lookups as well. So that's just a check that I do, but that's it. So answer the five questions on at the very end there. And that concludes the lab for this week. So happy uh, configuring, happy administrating folks. Until next time, this is Professor Brown. We will see you later.